Oh, oh my gosh. Ah, I see them coming up. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our workshop. We're going to wait just a few moments to let more people join. Welcome everyone. We have a few more attendees still coming. So we're gonna wait just another minute or two to allow everyone time to log in. Okay, we'll go ahead and get started. Thank you again, everyone, for joining us. We are the Arts Council for Long Beach. Today, we will be going over the California Creative Corps Budget and Documentation Workshop. We have presenting Lisa DeSmit, Pro Director of Programs, Sergio Alan Diaz, Programs Associate, and Tom Peters. And I am Judy Estrada, the Communications Manager for the Arts Council. Our mission here at the Arts Council for Long Beach cultivates the physical, social, and economic characteristics of Long Beach neighborhoods by nurturing and enlivening the arts. Our vision, the Arts Council for Long Beach envisions a thriving Long Beach that benefits from universal participation in the arts. Arts LB overview, we serve individuals, groups, and organizations through advocacy, arts education, public art, and grant making within the city of Long Beach. We practice profound inclusion as a collaborator and convener for the benefit of all communities. Before we get started, 
All questions will be answered through the Q&A button that is located on the bottom portion of your Zoom screen. You can locate that button right now, so that way you can, when you do have a question, you can find that easily. Feel free to use reaction buttons. You can locate the reaction buttons uh, next to the Q&A. They're just a couple of icons over. Oh, it looks like you might not have the option for reactions. That's okay. And comment in the chat. Feel free to introduce yourself and add your social media handle in the comments. Please note that all questions should be asked in the Q&A button on the lower portion of the screen. Hello, everybody. I'm Lisa DeSmit, Director of Programs. We're just going to do a very brief overview of the Creative Core program before doing a deep dive into the budget and artistic documentation. Um, some folks may have attended other workshops, and for those who haven't, we just want to kind of do a quick overview so that everybody knows what, what we're talking about. <laughs> so um, the Creative Core program has multiple administrating organizations. We are not the only one. And so this is a program of the California Arts Council. Um, we are one of 14 organizations and um, one of several that is representing the LA and Orange County um, region. And there is, um, I know 18th Street Art had a statewide one, um, and then there's other ones that are statewide as well. So we all have different program designs. Um, so each administrating organization is use, is a, a little bit different with the Creative Core program. And so we're gonna be talking about our program. Um, you're also welcome to go on the California Arts Council site and look into some of the other administrating organizations programs. And this program came about through the California Arts Council and it's a pilot program. So this at this point, it's a one-time $60 million allocation um, from the California Arts Council, and that's for all of the administrating organizations. Um, the Arts Council is only getting a small portion of that 60 million to administer, um, and uh, most of that is going towards artists and organizations. Um, and so we'll be administering one that's focused on Orange County and LA County. And our program design is one that um, pairs organizations with artists. And so it's really seen as an artist residency program and a little bit of a matchmaking process where organizations first apply and then artists will be applying. So our organization application has closed, but I do wanna go over um, some of the key priorities of the Creative Core program. And this is for the whole program, not just ours. Um, Part of the reason that this program came about was because of certain um, things, for example, COVID-19. And so this pilot program is, is coming out of a lot of that that's already happened. Um, so this program from the Arts Council is for artists and nonprofit organizations, and they must be addressing one of these four key areas public health awareness, messages to stop the spread of COVID-19, public awareness related to water, energy, conservation, climate mitigation, and emergency preparedness, relief and recovery, civic engage engagement, including election participation, and social justice and community engagement. And um, when we did the organization application, those organizations in order to be eligible needed to either be located in, work with, or serve areas in the in Los Angeles or Orange County that were within the lowest 25% of the California Healthy Places Index. And we did have a workshop that went into more detail about the Healthy Places Index. Um, so you're welcome to, um, to get some more information, deeper dive into what that is. So um, we'll be announcing the community organizations in May. We're still in our process of selecting organizations in the grant panel process. Um, and so community organizations were asked to apply to just say, we want to host an artist. They weren't asked to submit a project. They were asked to identify which area of interest they were with one of those four key um, areas of interest and identify their community and, and what kind of work that they do. We are gonna be selecting 30 organizations to receive a $30,000 grant. And that grant is to offset any costs related to the program. 
um, however that organization chooses to use that. And we will be providing professional development for both artists and organizations throughout that year long project for those that are selected. Um, and so the eligibility for nonprofits was that the nonprofit organizations needed to be focused on their communities, needed to be community centered, social service organizations, cultural organizations, health centered, environmentally focused organizations, organizations promoting social justice, and arts organizations were also included in that. Um, and they needed to have strong ties to their community and either have a 501c3 or have um, a model fiscal sponsor agreement with a 501c3 organization. And it was open to small, medium, and large organizations. Um, so, so yeah, <laughs> yeah. So we had a total of 90 organizations apply for the program. Um, out of those 90, 50 were from Long Beach, uh, 30 were from LA County, and 10 were for Orange County. Um, the artist and artist cohort and performers application is currently open on our website. Uh, the, this is for any artists, uh, artist cohorts and performers looking to collaborate with the nonprofit organization, as uh, Lisa mentioned. The artist will be receiving a $50,000 grant uh, in addition to a $25,000 project budget. Um, they'll also be receiving professional development in conjunction uh, with the organization. The deadline to submit your application is May 15th. And as mentioned, it's up on our website. Some eligibility, um, it's for Los Angeles and Orange County based artists. Some documentation will be uh, needed to be provided to show your residence here within the counties. Um, and you also actually must be located within the lowest 25% uh, quartile of the Healthy Places Index or work with slash serve the areas within the um, California Healthy Places Index. And to learn more, you could visit that uh, previous workshop that's on our YouTube, uh, where I go a little bit more in depth and actually show the Healthy Places Index and how to kind of navigate it. Um, some program overview is uh, we're currently here today with our budget and documentation workshop. Um, May 15th is the application deadline and the projects for this program are to start July 2023. Um, and this is where you'll find our actual past workshop and we'll also be having uh, future technical assistance with this type of stuff in terms of writing your, your application and documenting your artworks. So keep your eye out for that as well. Um, and here is more information to connect with us and contact us. Um, I don't know if you want to, then we'll hand it off to Tom so he could go over the budgets and the work samples. Well, good afternoon, everybody. And thank you for joining and thank you for joining us here. And, uh, so as Sergio was saying, this is a, uh, this is, we're going to be covering budgets and work samples today. For myself, um, I am a grant writer. I work with, with Arts Council for Long Beach, and I'm also an artist myself. So I wanted to go over some of the, some tips, tricks, and some just general ideas with the budgets and work samples. Um, so why don't we just dive on in here? So this is how this is going to work. Um, so I figured about 10 minutes, just we're going to talk about some just general tips and uh, for the project itself budgeting for about 20 minutes, then we'll do about 20 minutes of questions, um, then we'll move on to work samples and um, get questions and then closing. So I, I from here on out, I'm, I'm assuming probably about an hour to an hour and 20 minutes, um, depending on questions and uh, and how we go. So let's, uh, so here, can you go to that slide, please? Okay, so one of the things you really need to, to remember while you are creating your proposal is that there needs to be a through line. You've got to tell your story, and that's what the entire proposal should be. So there needs to be a through line between you and what you've done, your um, your artwork, your uh, your past experiences, your community. That then has a through line to the project that you're proposing, which will again feed into the budget and to your work samples. So the reason I wanted to talk about this is it's really important to keep the entire proposal unified. And so the budget and the work samples need to tie directly to your project. So with both the budget and with the um, work samples, you need to walk the panelists through your vision. So assume that they don't know who you are, they don't know your work, they don't know what your vision is. So it's 
your task here to be absolutely as crystal clear and as concise as you can possibly be. So the project itself should be the crux of the entire argument. So anything that you write, any, any work sample that you post, any part of your budget, it all has to refer back to the project. So keep that in mind as you're writing it, that the project is very central to everything. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so the main thing to think about the, so the budget. The budget is as much telling the story of your project as anything else. So the main thing that they want to know, the panelists who will be reviewing your application want to know is one, is your project feasible under and as as you thought of everything and number two is can it be done within the twenty five thousand dollar cap okay next one so the things when you're working on the budget refer back to questions number four and number five um i'm not going to read the whole thing here we'll 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 leave this slide here for the for the recording so you can uh you can refer back to it. But question four is what is your proposed project? And question five is the feasibility of a successful project. So this should inform what your budget is and your budget should inform this. So these two questions in your budget need to be absolutely tied together. So there should not be, if there's an element in the budget that's not in questions four or five or something that's in question four or five, that's not in the budget, there's a problem. They should everything should tie it very neatly next okay so I'm, i'm created a couple of examples of budgets here so here's example number one of a project so this is an illustrator and a children's book author it's a cohort of two artists this artist cohort will interview asylum seekers to learn what foods are most associated with the winter solstice and related holidays in their native cultures the final result will be an exhibition of illustrations, collected stories, and recipes. The final artwork will be 12 20 by 30 canvases, and an accompanying book will be published through Amazon. Um, Sergio, can you, uh, uh, can you uh, pull up the, uh, the budget? Yes, let me go ahead and pull that up. Thank you. Great, thank you so much. Okay, so this is our this is our first scenario here. Now, what I've done here is the Arts Council for Long Beach has created a specific fillable PDF for you. Now, if you happen to have more space than that, you can create your own and upload that as well. But if you can try to keep it within the form, that's that's great. Um, what I did here is I converted it. I converted it into a Google Doc, and I well, while you're working on these. I highly recommend that you create a worksheet either in Excel or Google Docs so that you can kind of work around everything and add up the columns. It, it makes things a lot easier. So um, uh, for those of you who are visual artists, I apologize. I am not a visual artist. <laughs> so if things are if things are off here, I, this this was just this is just basically to give you an idea. So number one, materials and supplies. So in this one, obviously, there are going to need to be 12 20 by 30 canvases. I'm guessing about three hundred and fifty dollars. Um, Twelve uh, twenty by sixteen foam boards, so that's for the descriptions and for the recipes that will go along with it. Uh, brushes and supplies, uh, printing fees, things like this. Um, next, there, uh, this group is going to hire a PR consultant, and they've they have found a Long Beach Marketing Company does not exist. Don't look it up. Um, and they've uh, Long Beach Marketing Company says yes, we can do this for three thousand dollars. So that's that's their fee for this. Now, moving on to the venue fees, uh, hiring additional artists. No, the two of them are going to take care of it. You don't need additional artists. Uh, the venue fees here, um, security, cleaning, and so forth. Now, this particular artist cohort are going to be exhibiting their, they're going to be exhibiting their artwork in the offices of the organ, their partner organization. So they're not really going to need anything. But they would assume that would, if they did, it would cost about $3,000, and that's where the in-kind is. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with the term in-kind, in-kind basically means anything that's donated. Um, so to put in-kind in there kind of gives you an idea that you thought about this. This is what it would be if you had to pay for it. But 
the exhibition is going to be at the partner's office, so they are delivering it in kind. And, and Sergio, if you can know, scroll up a little bit um, to the bottom line here. Um, yeah, oh, and the other one I have down here. So you'll notice here on, on the absolute, and I'm pointing at the screen, you can't see what I'm talking about, sorry. <laughs> so um, the printing of the book through Amazon, Amazon prints on demand, that's not a cost. However, for the exhibition, they're going to want several copies of the book. So about $500 of advanced copies for the book should take care of that. So this gives you a total expenses of $4,210. Now, this is well under the $25,000 cap, and that's fine, because the idea is $25,000 is a very, very large budget, and it's, it's in there to give you capacity to basically do just about anything. So in the case of this particular cohort of artists, they're able to do this well under $25,000, and this is a, a completely viable budget. Okay, so let's, um, uh, Sarah, if you can move on to the next one. So example number two. Here and I, I'm I'm making poor Sergio here just ping pong between two screens. So thank you, Sergio. So we get back to that. Here we go. So example number uh, two. This is a solo choreographer and dancer. Um, so this artist will create a site-specific work at a factory that employs people with disabilities. The work will celebrate the struggles and achievements of people who have found their vocations through the partner organization. The work will be accompanied by a solo trumpet player and audience members will move uh, with the dancer from site to site at various locations in the factory. Okay, so this is a this is a much simpler project than the previous one. And uh, Sarah, if you could pull up the, uh, the budget on that. So this is an example of a, of a much simpler project that still fits within the guidelines of what we're looking for in the in the California Creative uh, California Creative Core program. So you'll see here, this is much simpler. So starting out here, um, there are going to be costumes for both the artist and the uh, and the trumpet player. So about six hundred dollars. Um, they are going to do ad space and they are going to do social media. They haven't quite figured out how they're going to do yet. Yeah. So under notes, they put to be determined. If you can, I would put notes under absolutely every line item. What you want to do is to make the idea, the budget as clear as humanly possible so people can really understand that the panelists rather can really understand what it is that you're trying to fund. So in this case, if it's to be determined, go ahead and put that in. And um, so down here, so hiring. So the next one is hiring additional artists, um, composer, performer, trumpet player. Well, it turns out the artist spouse is a trumpet player and composer. And their spouse will donate their time and talents to this project and with union regulations and so forth for this let's say it's a $1,500 so there's that's $1,500 of that and that is an in kind because that artist is donating their time. Um, it will take place at the at the party's location again $3,000 for venue security cleaning that's not if you notice not in the bottom line now this particular factory, let's say, doesn't have a huge parking lot. So valet service is going to be required because it's a small parking lot. So let's say here about $500 for valet services for the evening's performance. So for this particular one, the total expenses, because you're not using the venue fees and, and the composer performer are donating their time, the cost is only $2,600. Again, this is the same idea and it's, it's completely, it's doable in in either sense. And uh, before we go on to, I'm sorry, let's go on to the next one. And before we go on to scenario number three, it's important to understand with these that these projects are going to be changing as you work with your partners. So what we're trying to get here is a basic idea of what you have in mind. So knowing that a lot of this will change and the budget will change. So the budget very much is a best guess but again, it's to give the panelists an idea that, give the panelists the notion that your idea is completely feasible. Okay, so let's go on to number three here. So example number three is an animator and multimedia artist. This project uses the classic game of chess to generate empathy with youth, uh, for youth in the criminal justice system. The performance will take place in a large warehouse space with life-size chessboard painted on the floor. 
Audience members can either be participants or spectators. Participants will be given roles at random, king, queen, bishop, knight, rook, or pawn, and will stand on their assigned squares. Each participant will wear a cape bearing their role in the game. The players will be two people at opposite ends of the chessboard on tall ladders and dresses prison guards. Each move will be shown by bright spotlights that will illuminate the piece that is to move and where they are to move. Dark ambient music will play, and an animated film depicting system-engaged youth describing their daily lives as young people without freedom will play against the back wall. Okay, and if we can get the budget for that one. So this one is a very large-scale project, as you, can, as you can probably imagine. So the costs are quite extensive here. And you'll notice that there are more spaces here than the, um, uh, than the fillable PDF. So in this case, the artist has added a whole bunch of rows. But notice that they, they, the formatting is identical, so that, they, so that the panelists can, see, can compare one artist to the next. So I'm just only going to go through this very quickly. So we have costumes at $1,000, that's the capes, uh, paint for the floor, um, a six channel speaker array with speakers, cables, and rental for three days, because there'll be a Friday, Saturday, Sunday performance, um, a lighting rig for three days, uh, a Zoom mobile recorder to capture the voices of the, of the students, projector rental for three days, um, ad buys and social media. The artist is very good at promoting, so they will do that. Uh, they'll need to hire a composer, they'll need to do mixing and mastering, theater tech, lighting operators, you get the idea. And um, if, if you can um, scroll down here, so the total expenses on this one is $24,700. So this is a very, very large project. Is it competitive? Yes, because everything has been taken care of here. There are There's really nothing, including chair rentals, that has not been thought of here. So this would also be a feasible this would also be a feasible budget because it's detailed. Okay, um, Sergio, if you can go back to the. Um, and, and as I said, they, they, we, we all know that these budgets will change as projects develop because the idea is to work with your partner to develop these ideas. So here are a couple of tips that I recommend here. There's a particular order in doing this that as a grant writer, I recommend. It's a little backwards from what's on the form. So once you decide what your basic project is, write your idea out in the simplest, most basic form. I'd say bullet points or an outline, and then do the budget. So once you've got the budget down, it becomes much easier to answer questions number four and five. Because instead of trying to come up with your idea and then trying to shoehorn it into the budget, it's actually better to decide how the budget is going to go together and then write the questions out. Because if you can keep everything all together that way, it's, it's a really much simpler way of making sure that you've thought of everything. And also if you, if you wind up doing your budget and it, and it winds up being over $25,000, then you know you either need to scale back, find some in-kind or revise your project and rethink it. This is something that I think will save you quite a bit of time. And again, this, this is the through line that I'm talking about between what you do, your project, the budget, and the work samples. Okay, hey, next slide. Okay, um, so I hope I've covered well. Um, are, there, are there some questions? So we'll do about, we'll do about 10 minutes of, of questions if we have them. If not, we'll move right on. There have been a couple questions in the chat um, that I might be able to answer, Tom. Um, sure. is, there, is there an advantage of submitting a budget that's way under the 25K as you've shown in your examples, i.e. are you more likely to get the grant if you have a smaller, cheaper project? And my response to that would be, no, that is not part of our um, evaluation criteria at all. Budget size is not a part of the criteria. What we're really looking for is feasibility um, based on the budget. So we want to make sure that um, you're not proposing this pie in the sky project that's completely not feasible within that $25,000 budget and keeping in mind that this is a year long project. Um, so it's really feasibility that we're looking for more than budget size. I don't know if you have any additional <laughs> comments, Tom. Yeah, I, I would say there's in, in general, the budget has been set very high to be able to do just about anything. 
and you do, I would say an ambitious project is probably more competitive. Um, excuse me, I'm going to close the door. My neighbor has a TV on. <laughs> Sorry about that. I live I live in downtown Long Beach. It tends to be quite noisy down here. Um, yeah. So I mean, from a budgetary standpoint, I think it's more important that you think about every single part of the budget, and your idea needs to be very solid and very concrete. But you know, as I showed in my other two, in the, the two examples were well under the budget, um, and I think they're also they're both I think very viable ideas. Okay, great. Um, and then where does the money go if we don't spend the budget total amount? Um, it would be redistributed. I mean, it, it we don't have enough to fund every project at the $25,000 level. So we're really just trying to get a sense of everybody's budget. So it, it's going to be balancing it with other budgets that are smaller. It's not like it's going to just disappear somewhere. <laughs> I hope that answers that question. Um, so if the submitted, if you submit a small budget after you meet with the org and redesign the project, the budget gets significantly bigger, but still under the 25K, is that a problem? No, that shouldn't be a problem. And that that's partly kind of addressing Cody's question is that, you know, we want to make sure there's padding for those type of things where when this is just a preliminary budget and I want to just be really clear about that there's been a lot of questions about what if things change this is a preliminary budget really to determine feasibility of the project and what it is to get a sense the budget is really almost like a narrative to get a sense of what you're planning on doing and if it's feasible and what and help panelists to really get a picture of what that might look like um, you will have an opportunity to revise the budget and this is where we'll see you know everybody's who's selected budget together and figure out um you know where there's holes who needs more money that type of thing so that process will happen later uh, if, but we are I, trying to stay within the twenty five thousand dollar budget if i can interject i want to tell a very quick story here um the reason that you do a feasibility budget is this there was an orchestra in Germany that I, I was on on tour and uh, this orchestra decided that they wanted to do Mahler's second symphony in the local cathedral. The cathedral is this this it was built in the 1100s. It's this very historic building. They thought Mahler's resurrection symphony would be perfect. So that's what the Meister wanted to do. So to do it in in this historic building they needed to build a stage and they needed to build um they needed to build um places for the choir and um there was no lighting so they needed to do lighting and the acoustics were such that they couldn't hear anything so they actually had a cutting edge sound system that would cancel out any reflected sounds it cost them 350,000 euros to do this if they'd done a feasibility study, they could have told the maestro, no, you're just simply going to have to do this in the concert hall. You can't do this at the cathedral. But nobody bothered to stop to, <laughs> to see what the feasibility is, because the, the, the simple idea of doing Mahler's Second Symphony in the cathedral is a really wonderful idea, but it was completely impractical. So that's the reason you want to do these feasibility budgets, is to see how your idea may come to life. And, and to be honest, when I was doing example number three, I knew I wanted to do a large one. Um, I was getting really nervous that it was going to cross that $25,000 line. <laughs> so, you know, at, 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 even though we all know that the budgets will change as the project develops, because it's going to develop over a year's time and in partnership with, with the partnering organization, if this is just to give the panelists an idea that you've thought of everything, so that it doesn't, so that it really doesn't balloon out into something that is that is unmanageable. Thank you, Tom. I hope that helps to clarify for folks. 
Um, we do have quite a bit of questions. So I'm gonna, some of them are not budget related, but um, I'm gonna try and go through. Uh, one question is about the timeline for the project um, and the project timeline. Um, I don't know if you wanna go back to that slide, Sergio, but it's um, it, the year project is starting July 1st. Uh, 2023, and it will be going through one year to June 30th, 2024. So that is the, the timeline for the project. Um, and then um, we will not be announcing the organizations prior to the due date. Um, how is the budget allocated? Will artists be reimbursed or are uh, portions sent in phases? Uh, we have not determined how that process will roll out. We definitely don't want artists to be expensing things. Um, uh, part of the guidelines say that things cannot be expensed before the, the grant process, um, but we, we do want to make sure that artists receive the funding before their project so that they're not um, putting out money on their own and having to be reimbursed. So we will definitely be taking care to make sure that that doesn't happen. Um, somebody said, can I participated in the group webinar earlier? Are artists able to apply for this opportunity as well as others and potentially be offered multiple grants fellowships? Or would the artists have to choose if they receive multiple offers? So um, I think this is referring to a countywide web webinar that we were on and there were um, several organizations presenting. One of the other organizations is with the Creative Corp program and with one of the other administrating orgs. And so, that um, as far as the Creative Core program goes, you can apply for multiple, apply to multiple administrating organizations, but you can only accept one award. So if you were to apply to the Arts Council and Community Partners or 18th Street, and you are selected for both, you would need to choose which one you want to accept. And unfortunately, there's different deadlines for each one, so it can get a bit tricky. There is a server that, um, we're all communicating as administrating organizations to show who has been awarded. So that communication will be taking place, but you will be only able to accept one award. Um, the California Arts Council really wants to make sure that that funding is distributed as widely as possible. Um, and to be fair to everybody within California, we wanna make sure that people aren't accepting multiple awards. Um, is a community engagement project with a plan for engagement with a broad spectrum of individuals in Los Angeles in Orange County not specific enough as a project? I think you would definitely need to be more specific than that. Um, what does community engagement mean? What does that look like? How would you budget that? Um, that type of thing. Um, so, and then how will we know or develop our project if we currently do not know the partner organizations? Um, you're just uh, proposing an idea that you have on how you can work with a nonprofit organization. Um, and then the budget outline, I don't see a line for paying the artists themselves. Tom, I don't know if you wanna go back or Sergio, if you wanna go back to the budget so we can talk yeah, about the, Yeah, we can, either way, why don't you go to the last, to the previous. That the the third one. Okay, so um, where did I put it here? Okay, so you'll see under uh, line twenty there it says videography and animation zero. That's completed by the artist. You're being uh, if you receive this award, you're receiving fifty thousand dollars to do this project. So this is that that is and Lisa, please correct me if I'm wrong here. That that is that that is your payment, is okay. is your particip your fifty thousand dollars participation in the project. So your payment is that, and it doesn't really need to be in this budget because that's handled separately. This is simply to do the project itself. Um and. There were some questions in the last webinar that we did um, about, you know, I'm going to use one of those examples. There was a like a dance cohort, but one of the artists wanted to apply, but wanted to invite some of the other dancers um, to be part of the culmination. And so that part would be in the budget. So that artist who's applying, who is the cohort, um, who is the, the main person who's planning the project and involved in all of the 
the whole year long with the organization, they are receiving the 50,000, but may hire some other artists to perform at an event or, or do some sort of engagements. So that's two separate things. Um, I think, yeah, so we're getting some, we're getting some questions in the chat. So if folks could please um, do it in the Q and A. It's a little bit hard for us to keep up with both. Um, so if you do have questions, please put them in the Q and A, not the chat. Um, so I think we can move on. And if there's anything we missed, we'll catch up the next um, pause. Okay. Okay, so uh, moving on to the work samples. Projects, grants like this, proposals like this are won and lost on work samples. This is really the most important part of it because this is, this is the time for you to show what you do and how you do what you do. So let's start off with the rules for this particular, for this particular grant opportunity. There are two work samples that will be required. Um, one work sample equals, oh, so one more time. So the, the two work samples will be submitted on a single PDF for 10 minutes of total reviewing time. This is how it's being calculated. So what is one work sample? Well, one work sample can be one five minute video, one five minute audio clip, 10 images, or one writing sample. So for the second work sample, you can do another five minute video you could do a five minute video and 10 images, you could do an audio clip and a writing sample, you could do two 10 image sets that's this is this is how this comes together so that. But everything needs to be on a single PDF and um, the files need to be under 25 megabytes, so you will need to. So you may need to, especially for, for visual artists, you may need to squash them down a little bit to make sure that they'll work. Now for audio and video samples, they are on YouTube or Vimeo uh, without, a pass, without password protection. So you'll put your link, you put the link of it onto the PDF itself. And, um, and again, so, so long as there's not a pass, that password protected, that works well. Okay, uh, can you put the next slide, Sergio? Okay, so here are some basic good practices for work samples. Really be kind to your panelists and keep them in mind at all times. Um, don't make them work for it. So on your PDFs, you want to have a description of what, you, of what this is doing and how it relates back to the project. So you want to keep the description short and clear. And as I said, always relating back to the project. Uh, number your pages. I mean, that seems obvious, but that can actually cause problems. Uh, now again, this is this is just advice coming from me as as a grant writer with 20 years of experience. In order of importance, you need a work sample that is cl most closely related to the project, and closely related to the community that you recommend that you're representing. Your secondly, your best work. Third, the sample quality, and fourth, most recent. It's a really good idea to have samples that are under three years old, the, the more recent samples you can get, the better. But really, the most important thing is to make sure that it's top quality work that's related to the project. Okay, next, next slide. Okay, so we're going to start here with um, this wonderful photographer, photographer, Sergio Alan Diaz. Thank you, Sergio, for, for lending your, your work here. Um, so this is an example of what a PDF might look like. So the first page, and this is again what I recommend, is to put a table of contents in. So if you are doing uh, video work samples, do this and then put the link down underneath it. But in this case, because this is a visual art sample, and we just we just have two images here just for today. So uh, sample number one is called "Try Not to Fail: Pick Yourself Up" from 2020 digital photograph. In this photograph and the next. I'm exploring a concept of fracturing between people and ideas by constructing various elements, colors, and textures. Mending fractures at the proposed project will use this technique in a way that underline, underlining divisions and perhaps finding a way out. Sample number two, Immigrant Daughter, 2020 Digital Photograph. Um, 
try not to pick yourself up. Oh, this, I have the wrong title down. Don't do that. <laughs> this should say immigrant daughter. Um, also outlines the fracturing between people. This inherent ambiguity will be the focal point of mending fractures. So you see here, this prepares the panel for why you pick this sample and, and then what that sample is. And Sarah, if you could uh, show your work. <laughs> And so these are these are um, these are two of the images that, that Sergio actually did, and um, so you can see how this all works. I, I would um, just for this slide, there are two on there. I would do one image per page, um, just so that people can work at it. So again, the idea here is that the panelists will have ten minutes to look at your whole work. So that's assuming with two work samples of ten images each, that's that's about 30 seconds per, per image. So that gives a person enough time to really look at it. Um, can you go to, uh, to the next slide here? Okay. Now, moving on to um, audio, and we're, we, we're having some technical issues with, with the video work sample, so we, we may need to provide a link, but we'll, we'll try and see if they work. Um, okay, so here are just a couple of tips for video and audio work samples. Um, Set YouTube to unlisted if you don't want to share it publicly. That's that, that's not a hard thing to do. Um, that way you can protect your work. Or if you want to, if you want to do it publicly, or if it's something you've already done that fits within the guidelines, that's fine. Um, a fresh upload is much better than asking panelists to start at thirty three minutes and twenty eight seconds of view for five minutes. Again, you want to make this as easy on the panelist as possible. So it's much better to do a little to do a little excerpt of it and just do a fresh upload. I highly recommend that. Uh, you do have the option also in YouTube of starting a link at or starting the video at a particular place. That's another option if, you, if you're not able to do a fresh upload. But again, a fresh upload is actually much better. Um, always review the final clip and make sure it uploaded properly. That's really, really I can't impress on you how important that is. Um, which I know after you've done an entire proposal, to have to sit through 10 minutes of your work and is a little, <laughs> can be a little daunting sometimes, but do check to make sure that things upload properly because glitches do happen up in YouTube. Um, now this next one is actually really important. The best thing, again, for performing, this is really, really speaking here to performing um, media, digital artists, um, a single uninterrupted take is the best. It allows the panelists to really deep dive into your work and to see it. If you have little clips of this as and that or narrative or voiceovers on top of it, those are very good for promotional videos, but not for this. This is, it's much better to take a single, just a single clip of one piece of what you do to show that. Okay, and uh, should we try this here now? <laughs> All right, so this is this is an example of what not to do. And okay, go ahead. And we're not working. Okay. All right. Um, we'll we'll put this we'll put this we will put the link for this up on the. Uh, um, can we put that in the chat possibly for, for people to, uh, um, so, so the sample that I had created on this one had, um, if you'll notice, I, I, I did not say what kind of artist, I said I was a grant writer and an artist, but I didn't say what kind of artist I am. Um, I'm actually a composer. And what I'd done on this one was to create a bunch of random images and with one of my pieces. And it has lots and lots of narration on it. It obscures everything and doesn't really tell the panel anything. It doesn't show my music particularly well and is full of a lot of very aspirational things, which is actually better for your artist statement, but not for your work sample. So the work sample really should be pretty straightforward. And so um, if we can go on to the next one, maybe this one works a little better. This is actually one of my own work samples. We'll see if it decides to play. <laughs> you want to try it? Yeah, nothing there. Okay, we can let it go for a little bit here. Um, all right, so this is so this is me doing um, a 
clips from the Phantom of the Opera, um, and I'm playing this live. Um, this was at the Theater of Boston Court in Pasadena. So what I did on this one is to show, first of all, there's this is the movie with the music playing that you can't actually hear. Um, and this is clips from the actual film. And then here I am playing it. So as a work sample, this is one, this is a three minute clip that I actually used. This actually came from a successful grant, uh, an artist with disability grant from the um, California Arts Council a few years ago. So this is, um, when you get a chance to see it, you can kind of get an idea of how this works. Now, the other thing that I wanted to show here is I put a camera in the back of the concert hall and I've intercut it with the film itself to make it look like it's a two camera setting and it's not. This is a very simple way of putting this together in iTunes or sorry in uh, iMovie. And I would recommend for I would recommend for you when you do your samples to get the best sound and the best and the best images possible. Um, I would you can do this with an iPhone. I would recommend using a tripod so that you get a good stable image so it's not kind of bouncing right you can uh, Sarah, you can stop it if you like um so anyway um this is this is where you need to get the best sound that you can i, I and, and again um make sure that if you're a theater professional that all voices can be heard if you're our musician that everything is very clear you don't want things kind of jumbled around okay i think we can move on to the next Okay, um, so that's basically what it is for the work samples. Again, you want to show your best work and you want to show work that is directly related to the project. That's what I talked about. Again, it's that through line between what you do, where your project is, the budget and the work samples, they all have to be tied together. Okay, and uh, are, there, are there questions? Uh, yeah, so we do have some questions. Um, I think folks are still putting questions in the chat. We do ask that you put them in the Q&A. It's hard for us to find them, so I'm going to do my best. Um, somebody asked, will the organizations be announced prior to the application due date? I think we answered that one. Um, no, they will not. Um, how do you pay the 50K a lump sum or monthly? Um, we're still determining that process, but it definitely won't be a lump sum because we do want there to be um, some type of um, closing final report. So we'll need to make sure, you know, there'll, there'll at least be two payments broken down for the 50K. We don't know what that schedule will look like yet. Can you cut a five minute work sample together for best past and high quality? Tom, do you want to answer that question? Yeah, you can. I don't recommend it because it's better for the panelists to really experience what you do. Um, I, I've seen, I've had clients do this where they'll, where they'll piece things together and it can work, but it does create something that's a little bit jumbled. And it's actually better to take one coherent idea. There's one, for example, um, one client I had uh, did a, uh, um, did a production of 12 Angry Men and they put together five minutes of just a single five minutes of the courtroom scene with a fixed camera. And it was absolutely one of the most riveting things I'd ever seen. So if you can do that, I would really recommend doing a single take because it's a little more powerful and it gives the panelists a little better idea of kind of getting into your world. Because I think like that, 12 Angry Men um, sample I was talking about, it gave the panelists enough time to really sink into the realm and watch the actors working with each other. So that's why I think it's actually better to do a single piece and the single take. Great, thank you for that. Um... So your video application shouldn't be everything. The video professional advice, it should be five minutes of real time. Yes. Yeah, I mean, you, you want high quality, but there's no reason to, to 
spend a couple thousand dollars on a videographer. It doesn't need to be, it should be high enough quality to really see what you're doing. It doesn't need to be that level. If you, if you have the equipment and, or you know somebody who's willing to do it for you, or if you're willing to pay for it, more power to you. But really, um, you know, an iPhone, and oh, that was one thing I wanted to, I forgot to put in there. If you use an iPhone, make sure it's on landscape so that it's that that works better on YouTube. Anyway, um, because the quality of an iPhone, for example, is so high that you really can get extremely good quality out of the one. Yeah, thank you. Um, so then another question, this is uh, not related to artistic documentation. Um, do we, so also do we have to partner with an organization and do you facilitate intros? Um, yes, you will be paired with an organization. That's a big part of this grant opportunity. So if you're not interested in partnering with an organization, then I would not recommend applying for this grant. Um, and we will be doing more than just facilitating intros. We will be having professional development throughout the entire year for both the organization and the artist. It'll be a cohort. So everybody will be working together, getting to know each other. Those workshops are going to be geared towards, um, so this is like a pilot project and our goal is for sustainability. So we wanna provide workshops exactly like what Tom just said about how do you document your this process on your own? Um, how do you apply for more grant funding? Those type of workshops that, how do you market yourself? Those type of things to help with this project and um, sustainability. So this can be a continued partnership, ideally not just a one-time um, partnership. Um, is there a replay of the multi-grant webinar? I'm not sure about that. I'd have to check with the county um, to see if they're, I know that they recorded it. So um, I'll look into that. Um, and then another clarifying question. Yes, the artist receives 50,000 for, that is for the artist to use as um, almost like a, this is artist residency, if you will. So this is your stipend as an artist to use for rent or whatever. Um, cost of living, it's its almost like a salary for an artist for this project. And the tw up to 25,000 is for the project budget and the organization is also receiving 30,000 to offset their costs. Um, for a playwright, how many pages equals 10 minutes of viewing time? Tom, do you <laughs> have any suggestions for that? Boy, that's that's really, well, um, <laughs> help, helps to have a, a wife with a screenwriting degree. <laughs> um, the from screenwriting is roughly a minute per page. So I would say probably that would be about right. I mean, re really, it's it's a um, <laughs> well, OK. What I would do is to start a timer and read. And just read it aloud and see what 10 minutes is. Or five and five. Great, thank you. Um, so another question about the YouTube video, should it be a link in the PDF? Yes. So we're asking any, any audio or video links. Um, so if it's to SoundCloud for audio or any of those type of streaming, um, however you uh, put out your, your sound. And then either you, we recommend YouTube or Vimeo um, just because they tend to not have issues with panelists being able to review them. So those would be in a link. And then there's a question, can a project finish early, say April or May, rather than waiting until the very end? So the idea is that this is a year long project, that this is um, sort of like a deep commitment to the organization, not just a one time event that you're planning on doing. Um, so culminations may happen at different times, but we will be doing professional development throughout. So there could be a culmination um, that happens earlier or an event that happens earlier, but we really are looking for sort of deep work within the full year with that organization. We're asking artists to commit 80 to 100 hours a month working um, on this, this project with the organization. So um, it's really about that kind of sustained work and not just a one-off. So um, it could be the, the large majority could be culminated by then, but we we will be still conducting um, workshops and things like that and wanna make sure that the work is continuing to happen. Um, 
If you make music, should the music only be shared instead of the music video? Um, I think music videos are great. I think it's up to you. I don't know if you have any. Yeah, I, I mean, I, um, for myself as, as a musician, you can just share audio. Um, SoundCloud is a good way of doing that or YouTube with a static. But if, if you can, again, it depends on, it depends on what music you have, what, what you do. It's probably because panelists are reviewing this, people like to see things. So if you can do a video, that's really preferred. Um, that, that's just, I'm just speaking as a grant writer, not really as, as what's what's qualified for the grant. But I think if you if you have something that is visual, people do tend to respond to it better. Yeah. I think I would just be clear, though, that, um, you know, your artwork is the the audio portion of it, just so that the panelists aren't confused by, you know, a production that and expecting this is what you might be producing. So if you're clear in the description that that portion of it is is your work. And then um, can you use MP3 or MP4 or WAV files for audio samples? We are asking for links, so you would need to um, have it linked to. Do you have some suggestions, Tom, of best practices? Yeah, use for... WAV file. You, you, and unless, yeah, I mean, if, if, you're, if you're uploading it to SoundCloud um, or something like that, because it's, because it's something that's a link, um, either YouTube or SoundCloud, I really should use um, Wave if at all, Wave or AIFF if at all, if at all possible. Um, is a separate budget needed for the 50K? No, we're not asking for a budget for that. So essentially, we can have up to 20 images on one PDF. Um, if we have a few different collections we are featuring, do you suggest putting descriptions between the different collections or do the descriptions before the entirety of the image collection? Tom, do you want to answer that one? Yeah, I would say that's up to you. Um, the way I like to do things when I'm, when I'm working with a client that has um, images, a lot of times I, I will do, um, well, as I did in the example of, of Sergio's work, uh, to do a table of contents, one to two to three to four to five. That, that's the easiest way for people to refer back to. Honestly, it's up to you and um, how you want to present your work. But I mean, really a very brief description and how it ties back to the project is really, really important. So there's a question about the, the decisions. And so it is an independent review panel that is um, reviewing these. These are regional professionals that we comprise. Um, and for, I can speak for the organization applications. Since we receive so many applications, we really try and make sure panelists aren't reading more than say 50 applications. So we split it into two panels. Um, so there's five panelists on each. So there's a total of 10 panelists who are, they're not um, Arts Council uh, staff at all. So there's an independent panel who is using our scoring rubric. So that's in our guidelines. So really take a look at that. Um, and so they're using that to determine the scores on the application. So that is really how um, your applications will be evaluated. I, I anticipate quite, there's been a lot of interest in this grant. So I anticipate that we're gonna have well over a hundred applications from artists, I'm just guessing. Um, so we'll definitely be doing at least two panels for the artist portion as well. And then um, I'm not sure, it says, have those dates been selected? I'm not sure what that's referring to. Have workshops been pre-selected already? Oh, for the workshop dates. Um, no, we, we don't have those dates selected yet. Since I'm a filmmaker and I wanna create short film about the effects of being locked down for two years due to COVID, and I want to develop a script with working with the organization discussing mental health. Um, I'm not sure what the question is here. Are you asking if that would be a project that could work? Um, it definitely meets those four criteria of, um, you know, messages to stop the spread of COVID-19. Um, and it could be a project that, um, 
you know, might be a good fit for, for an organization. So I think it seems like a good idea. I'm trying to see if I missed any. Um, for an organization that applied, can they give the artist a letter of reference? Yes. We did have a question last week about the Arts Council writing letters of recommendation. Um, we will not be writing any letters of recommendation. Um, we determined that that would be a conflict of interest. So um, sorry for anybody that asked for that. Um, what if you propose serving a population that is not served by any of the approved nonprofits? So um, we're gonna be really looking at the area of focus, your values as a artist, um, seeing if they're aligning and um, how they may work with, with other organizations. So it's really like a matchmaking process that's happening. So I can't really speak to that until we see the organizations um, and how that might fit in. I wouldn't say that just because you work with a different population than the nonprofits that it would disqualify. It's just um, thinking about pairing. So it might actually be a good thing. For example, if an organization was interested in more intergenerational work um, and they serve senior population and they wanted to bring in more youth. So, you know, there could be a fit there in terms of what their goals are and the artist. So it doesn't necessarily disqualify you as an artist to not be working with that population because a lot of times the goals of the organization are um, to expand what they're already doing. And this is why we're bringing artists into these organizations is to really get organizations thinking outside of the box, thinking differently. And so um, we're really looking for artists to share their vision and their projects that they wanna do and, and have that pairing kind of work out that way. Um, are we supposed to submit 10 Im images of work in the PDF or would two be okay? It's really up to you, it's up to 10 images. So if two does the job, go for it. <laughs> um, so working with the organization, can I still outsource actors? Yes, so that 50,000 would go to the artist that's applying and you could put um, the actors into your project budget as being paid as part of the project. I think that's all the questions. I don't know if I missed anything in the chat. Judy, um, I know you've been keeping up with it. Is there anything that we missed? I just wanted to confirm that the questions um, at the top, because how was the budget allocated? Will the artist be reimbursed? Were, were those answered? Yes, I answered those ones. Right. And I do know that a few people wanted to raise their hand and ask a question. So uh, you're welcome, Aunt Ashley. And, Lucas has a question. I'm sorry, was it 20 or 10 images? It's 10 per work sample and there are two work samples. So that's 20 if that's how you choose to how you choose to do that. And again, it's not required that you come up with that many. It's that's that's the maximum. And, and I, I think I, I saw a question in the chat. Somebody had asked about whether a three minute sample work sample is fine. Three minutes is fine. Five minutes is fine. It's just Five minutes is the limit. Then there's a question. Could you go back to the time allocation question? I heard 80 to 100 per month or? Correct, Correct. yeah. We're, so we're looking for artists. So $50,000 is a significant you know, um, artist stipend. And so it is for a year long project. And we're asking artists to commit to approximately 80 to 100 hours per month working on the project. And that, that includes everything from meetings with the organization and planning, um, whatever, if there's an event associated with that type of planning or any kind of um, artwork production that might be happening. So mm -hmm. if somebody was gonna be doing a series of artworks for an exhibition, you know, that time that they're spending in, in to producing their work. Also the time spent um, in the professional development workshops that we're gonna be hosting. So all of that goes into that 80 to 100 hours. Um, I mean, artists could easily spend more time than that, um, but we're, we're asking 
for you to be dedicated to this project. So um, you're not, you're going to want to consider that when you're applying, um, if you actually have the time to be able to commit to that. Next question is, if the grant is won, when exactly is the payment made to the artist? In a lump sum or month by month? Um, I think I answered this question earlier, but we have not determined the payment schedule yet, um, but it will definitely be at least two payments um, because we do want to make sure that artists um, are, are working throughout the whole year long program um, and are submitting a final report. So it'll be at least two payments, maybe more. I don't think we're gonna do monthly, um, so. The next question, could you talk about the professional development workshops? What does that look like? Yeah, so um, we're gonna be looking at doing either monthly or every other month workshops to support artists and the organizations throughout this project. And so we're still in the process of planning those workshops. Um, so we don't have exact schedule or exactly what they're going to be look, look like, but um, one example might be something like a filmmaker that's going to come in and talk about um, how to document your work yourself um, and, you know, what that might look like, or um, a workshop on grants and grant writing to help um, continue the program a marketing workshop on how to market yourself as an artist or as an organization. So these are just really to support the program and, and to support your work as an artist. Um, and then also just uh, sort of one-on-ones to facilitate this collaboration and to make sure everything's going okay with the artists and the organization um, and those kind of check-ins and facilitation um, if necessary. And, and just last, support in general. <laughs> last question. So it's two work samples, 10 minutes per sample, and or a total of five minutes for each. It's a it's five two samples, five minutes per sample. So a total of 10 minutes reviewing time. And um, I think, is that all? Oh, I do have one question, Tom. It says all files must be under 25 megabytes. Um, do you have any recommended um, like file resizing programs that you might? Suggest? Really the best thing, um, Acrobat will do it. Um, if, you, if you have a Mac, um, Preview will also do it. There are lots and lots of ways of, of reducing the file. And Ashley just said Final Cut as well, so. Yeah, but it, it, reducing a PDF is is not. It, it, there there are ways to do it. And so um, I think we can open it up to questions if folks want to pop in um, and ask questions directly. So the whole PDF has to be under twenty five megabytes. Yes, that's mm -hmm. correct. So if you want to. Um, are folks able to raise their hand, Judy? Yes? Okay, so if you can raise your hand, and then we will. Well, there's another question. So the whole PDF has to be under 25 megabytes. Yes. And I would like to do PSAs to help connect people with the state-sponsored mortgage relief program. How do I target them if I don't know if they are one of your partner corporations? Are your partners local to Long Beach or Long Beach only or statewide? Um, okay, so are the organizations that are being selected are nonprofits, they're not corporations and um, they're all over LA and Orange County. The applications are all over LA and Orange County. So these are nonprofit organizations that focus on work in the community. So Annie, I'm going to open it up. I'm sorry. Cal, Cal, HF, Cal HFA is a nonprofit. Um, so uh, however, the nonprofits have already applied. Correct. Yeah. So if Cal HFA did not apply, then you should maybe think about that. 
Um, so Annie, I'm gonna open open it up. So sorry, one second. Okay, go ahead, Annie. Hi, um, I had two questions. The first of all is you were saying that it should have been within the last three years, but a lot of us who do like performance facing art and like live art that involves people like all together, like we haven't really been able to create stuff in the past three years um, as much. So is it okay if it's like from 2019 or 2018, some of the work samples um, is the first question. Yeah, that was actually something we talked about um, due to the pandemic is that we we didn't want to limit it and say it has to be within the last three years because we understand that times are very different now. Um, and so, you know, the work that you do that might be reflective of this project is might be a little bit older. So that's completely understandable. I think the idea is just if you <laughs> as recent as possible that you have. Yeah, I mean, I, what, what you want to avoid is something that was done in 1997, <laughs> unless unless it's, uh, don't laugh, I've seen it happen. <laughs> um, what you want to do is, it, unless it's something that, say, for example, you worked um, with the Khmer community here in Long Beach in 1997, and you want to work with them again, then that 1997 clip becomes more relevant. So sort of, you know, as I said in the in one of the slides there, they, they, the primarily it's whatever fits, the, whatever shows what you do with the project best as number one, then um, quality of performance, um, quality of video and relation to the pro. I mean, and then recent. So I would say kind of within within that guidelines, which generally speaking, if you're going to be if you're going for again i'm speaking as a grant writer here if you are going for a project that is to be funded now people want to see what you're doing now so you don't want to do and, and again as 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 an artist myself i know the the work the work that i did back in 2008 is nowhere near the work that i'm doing now it's it's as good it's just different i've evolved so if I show some work that I did from 2008, it's not any, it, it's not really representational of representative of, of what I'm currently doing. Okay. Um, and then the other question was, um, I do a lot of very interactive um, pieces that usually are kind of done in like intimate spaces that I don't always have recordings of because I try and, you know, make it so that it's a safe space for the people participating to be very like honest and open and not feel like I'm documenting them while they're adding their own personal experiences to things. Is it okay if like I have, you know, some descriptors of the project and some some pictures with like um maybe testimonies of people who participated versus having like video of the actual experiences, I guess? Uh, what what I would do again, speaking as a grant writer here, is do the testimonials and the photographs, but also put in the disclaimer that this is not um, that that you know the, to protect the privacy of of the participants. There is not video of this. However, it, it, basically, what you want to do with the work sample is to kind of walk people through what this might be. Um, I have one of one of my clients works with um, works with uh, system engaged youth, and trying to share work samples, trying to share samples of their work is impossible because of privacy concerns. So we've had to find all sorts of workarounds to try to to try to to show. I mean, well, I guess basically, what you want to do is to, to show the panelists what it is that you do in the best way that you can. But I, I think if 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 they know that it's simply not possible due to privacy concerns, the panel the panel will understand. But you need to create you need to kind of create that that picture of what it is that you do in their minds. 
Okay, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. We did get a, a few more Q and A questions, and then I see some more raised hands. So let me just answer these Q and A questions first. Um, my apologies for asking again. Please don't apologize. We we want to be as clear as possible. Um, but uh, visually, the way the work sample is explained is very confusing. For clarification, one more time, you want two work samples that total ten minutes, which might include two separate five minutes each. Also, are you requiring audio, video, or writing samples acceptable alone? Um, you want me to answer that, Tom? Or? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. The, the, the rule of thumb here is 10 minutes of, of, uh, of reviewing time. So if that, I'm hoping I'm answering your question here. If that means five minutes of video and five minutes of video, that's fine. If it's five minutes of video and um, five pages of text, that's fine too. It, it basically it, it's th those are the those are the set parameters. But again, as I as I was as I mentioned, Annie, the idea is that you want to create the story in the minds of the panelists as to what as to what you do. And 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 of course, if if you're doing something that doesn't fit neatly into the box, that's actually a really good thing, <laughs> because the more the more interesting things you're doing, the better. Um, I don't know. Did that answer that, Lisa? <laughs> yeah, I think that's great. And then you know. If, if writing samples is what you have, that's fine as well. Um, it doesn't need to be video or any, there's no specific. So it's two, two um, samples of your work and two marketing samples. So whether, however you want to mix that up is up to you. It's what's going to tell your story the best. That's really the bottom line. And I think something else that's important to state is that it doesn't need to be a total of 10 minutes. It, it's up to um, the 10 minutes is referring to the amount of time that we want to give panelists to review your work samples in the application. So if you do submit samples that fall underneath that 10 minute viewing time, that's also OK. So, for example, if you have a two minute video and a five minute audio clip, that'll be a combination of seven minutes worth of work samples. So that's also one way to look at it. It doesn't have to exactly equal 10 minutes. Whatever you submit has to be within the basically one to 10 minute mark. Yeah, keeping in mind that panelists are reading probably about 50 applications. So each panelist is reading about that many applications. So um, that's, you don't want to have something that's so long that um, it makes it difficult for them. Yeah, and the other side of it is uh, just to give you an example. My my wife is a specialist in, in writing microfiction, so for her to submit a story to this as a writing sample isn't nearly enough. It would to fill up the ten minutes. She would probably have about ten to fifteen stories, but that's fine. Or if you do haiku, for example, that's going to that's going to create many more samples. It, it's this is the, the challenging part of this is is that the, the 10 if you're looking at a piece of visual art you may look at it for a long time or you may look at it for a short time it really kind of depends on the viewer if you are in what i call a time-based art which is performing um video multimedia um choreography anything like this where you're asking a person to sit there for a set duration of time it's a lot harder so that, that, that's kind of why we put the guardrail the 10 minute guardrails up is because that's that's roughly for visual artists that's roughly 30 seconds per image which is a really good amount of time to take in a work and or that's 10 minutes of of audio or video or whatever combination of that you, you'd like to put in yeah, um, so then we have another question about references. Yes, we require two letters of recommendation. Um, so th that's part of the application. So you do need to work on getting letters of recommendation. Um, and then a question about the 50 applications. So um, for the organizations, we received 90 applications. And um, it's generally best practices to have panelists read no more than 50 applications. So. Um, we've split it into two panelists, panels, so 45 each for, uh, for organization, and I'm anticipating that we are going to receive quite a bit of um, artist applications as well. So we're splitting up the panels and capping it at 50 applications per panelist. So um, 
five panelists will be reading the same 45 applications. A different five panelists will be reading the other half of the applications. So each application will be read by five different people. Um, and then, so questions, uh, hands up. So, so Shatira, uh, let me um, allow you to ask your questions. Oh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Hi. <laughs> okay, so I have three questions. I'm gonna try to explain them as much as possible. Okay, so the first one was, hold on. Okay, so July, 2023 to June, 20, um, 2024. Is it, does this process looks like us developing this project up until then? And then there's like one main event in June of 24, or is it a continuous um, development of this project, which can have more than one event that takes place throughout that throughout this year? The only reason I'm asking is because I'm coming from a performing artist aspect. And us as dancers and choreographers, we think very differently than most performing artists. So I'm trying to make it make sense on how I'm going to propose the my idea and my project. Yeah, and it, it could be anything within, you know, we're not putting any specifications on that. Um, I think it's great to do multiple performances if that's, you know, how you work. Um, some, you know, some folks may be like a graphic design artist and, and their project is to do graphic design, um, you know, to help with the messaging for the organization or to create um, some new way of, of messaging through their art form. Um, or if it's like a videographer that, you know, wants to work with the organization in that way, it doesn't necessarily have to be an event or a project, um, but it's, it's working with the organization with okay. your artistic, however your you know, however you normally work, that, that's what we're looking for. Got it. Okay, next question. Tom had mentioned that the panel would like to see most of our new work versus, uh, or what we've been doing now versus old work. And so my question to that is, I've been doing this for years. And let's say um, as an artist now, I'm trying to move into a new flow of things, but not necessarily out of my genre. So what, how do I say this? What if some of my old work, I don't know how to say it. How do I explain basically some of the work that I've done now? but I'm trying to move into a direction of doing something new with that, if that makes sense. I think, I think I get where you're going. So like maybe some of your older work might inform the direction that you're going. Um, and so you want to include like maybe one sample that's older and, and one that's your newer work. Is that my understanding what you're saying? Yeah, in a sense, yeah. And I think this is where the description might be helpful. Um, like where Sergio, Sergio had put, um, you know, what it is. So if you put in that section, you know, this is an example, I'm, I'm being like really um, basic. You might be able <laughs> to phrase it better, but you know, this is an example of the direction that I wanna go with this project because of these reasons. And then this is current work to show, you know, something like along those lines. Yeah, so I, I would say, I would say, from what you're describing now, what what I would do is to do one sample of recent work and one of the older work and say, again, in the description, that this is an older sample, but this this is something that I would like to explore further mm -hmm. through this um, and, and to say, you know, I, I was I was exploring these themes through this through this work, but it would be much more in the style of the what I'm doing more recently. And it's something, okay. something, something of that something of that sense again what you want to do is to be able to tell you want to tell your story to the panelists and it's it's like i said in the beginning it's that through line going from from your practice through the project through the budget through the um through the work samples so you can really kind of see how it all 
ties in together and and how you as an artist are evolving um, and exploring new themes and, and bringing back old themes. And this is this is the this is the 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 line the thread that should run through the whole proposal. Yeah, I think adding to that is just adding that you're, you know, you're an artist in transition right now, exploring new themes. You know, I think that's a really like key word, like transition that like, you know, you're trying to go in a different direction, although your past work speaks about you in a different way. Um, so I think that's very valuable to describing saying like, you know, this is what I did going this way, how everybody has explaining, but yeah. Okay. All right, that actually answered the third question. So <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So we did get a couple more questions. I'm having trouble figuring out the organizations that might provide a recommendation. Um, it doesn't need to be from an organization. It could be from anybody that's familiar with your work as an artist um, that would um, be able to write a letter of recommendation. There are also a couple of folks that have had their hand up for a little while in the chat. We have an Eminem and a Lucas Gordon. Okay, there's just one last question here. Um, I think she means there's a time period, um, year date cutoff work such as, so is there a cutoff period? That we're, not provi we're not saying that a work has to be a certain um, date, but um, we recommend using the most recent as possible unless it relates to the project specifically mainly you just want to show what you're doing right now that's that's really that's really the the whole point of, of recent work is just to get an idea of what what where where are you right now as an artist and where do you want to go um so M M M, i'm gonna open it up for you to to ask your question hi hi thank you can you hear me yes Okay, um, uh, just a couple quickly to, for clarification. I was on the other um, um, session as well. So some of this was answered, but um, so if, um, first of all, schools, they're nonprofits. I was told from last time, a, a school is considered a, a nonprofit if we wanna be working with students um, I'm confused by your question. Uh, so the organizations have already applied. Right. Um, but if we, sorry, sorry to just to clarify, but if we want to submit, they've already been, they've already been um, chosen, but if our work is done with schools in those populations currently as part of the, the first quartile and the folks that we want to be working with, um, my understanding was that we can share that those are the folks that we have been working with and that we're interested in working with, absolutely. correct? Yes, yes, absolutely. Right. So if All you're right, doing great. work in schools, you could use those, right. those addresses and zip codes. Um, that, right. Yeah. And, I, and one of my letters of recommendation is from a principal of one of them. Perfect. Okay. And then, um, so I have, I'm in a multidisciplinary artist and designer. And so part of the whole po point of my project is to be develop, helping to develop integrative arts and, um, and for community and certain populations. And essentially um, for a couple of things, one for submission purposes, um, but also a clarification on sort of outcomes um, of, of the project. So could I have as part of my, um, the outcomes of my, of the project or the pr process of project is, um, is kids projects and also saying that I will have a, a small new body of work at the, at the end of the, of the, the year. Um, what kind of genre do you work in? Um, so, the sculpture, like products, actual objects. Um, so visual art, but also I'm a musician and I, I have done interdisciplinary installation, which is objects and sound. Um, the other part of this is that I'm an educator. I was a science teacher for a long time and I integrate, uh, like, sorry, as, as 
uh, interdisciplinary like science, math, arts teacher. And so my whole thing is that I'm integrating those aspects. Um, and so I'm, I, I wanna know that piece, but also as part of the sample, um, I wanna include my past design sculpture work as samples um, and potentially some aspect of curriculum that I've developed as part of like writing sample. Um, but I also was thinking of including audio sample because I have, you know, music out there, <laughs> you know. So can you just talk a little bit about people like me who have multiple genres? So I, I think I would go back to what Tom was saying about that through line and going back to what your project is that you're proposing. Yep. So are you proposing to do like workshops at the organization with students and then have some sort of um, like display or exhibition, you know, that mm -hmm. ties in of the work. And so then your work as like uh, um, different, you know, types right. of artists would, would fall into that. Or are you mm -hmm. saying that you're gonna just do one of those? Um, I think that's where you wanna tie it yeah. in. It's like, what's gonna best represent the project? Yeah, that, that makes sense to me. And I've done that, I've talked about that within the description, but I just wanna be sure in terms of the actual um, samples um, showing the work, you know, because Tom said, have it be, directly tied to the project that you want to do and the project that I want to do is it has integrative aspects of of those different parts of the work so I'm so just I guess, looking for the yeah so it's incorporating teaching and like yes an yes okay. I mean yeah, and I think or, it's important to show your work as an artist too um exactly yeah so. I, I don't know if you have any suggestions, Tom, on how to choose between those artworks. It, you know, mostly. Sorry, go ahead. No, the, I, I would say a lot of it depends on how you've done your the earlier parts of the proposal, because if you're the proposal should be able to tell your story actually quite well there. Sure. So yep. When you get to the work sample then I think it should be very clear as to what what you could pick. And, and again, what I would say is you, use, the, use the 10 minute rule. It's 10 minutes of, um, you know, the, there's there's 10 minutes of reviewing time. So can it just show me as a, as just my samples, just show me as an artist designer person and be like, hey, this is where this is part of my history and part of where I'm coming from and the the quality of my work. And I, in my story, I can tell my history and also it'll be in my resume, but in my story, I can tell the history of like my work as a, as a community person and educator and artist together, um, but really focus on the artwork and the samples. Yeah, what, what I would say here is, I mean, if you, if you can, if you can put yourself in the shoes of the panelist, they've received your proposal and they're reading about who you are and what you do, what your artistic statement is, and they're looking, yep. at, they're looking at your CV, and they're looking at your project, and they're looking at the budget for it. And then the question is, huh, wonder what it looks like. And, and that's really kind of what the work samples are for. Is is you know if you, it, it's it's part it's part of that. That's really kind of why I talked about it as a through line because it's part of that story. So when you get to that point, it really you should be able to show what you do after all of, you know, after going through all of this to be able to do a very quick selection of what's the quality level. I mean, that's, that's really what, that's really what the work samples are, are for, because there are, you know, it, it, it sounds like you're doing some like really amazing work and I, I'm sure you've got some, some yeah absolutely dynamite samples. So focus on they need to kind of rep yeah I, I would I would say go go through put yourself in the, and I would say this I would actually say this is great advice for anybody put yeah. yourself in the place of a panelist who has never heard of you yeah and, um, read through it and at that point when you get to the work samples think of to yourself if I was this panelist what would I want to see yeah I understand and I I do I I 
yeah, I think I'm more clear. I just one I want to clarify would it I will include visuals, of course, and I think I will include an audio p potentially audio um, sample. but um, in terms of any sort of curriculum because that is a big part of what I'm going to be you know proposing, should I do you think it would be feasible to to include? any sort of segments of curriculum or is that just too much like I don't know maybe not as interesting to them <laughs> they just want to see who I am as an artist <laughs> yeah I I would just to like piggyback off of what Tom's saying just thinking back there's you know a hundred probably I'm anticipating applications that we're yeah 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 so okay. like what is really going to stand out yeah and, um, I, I you know I think curriculum yeah. is really important but um I see <laughs> when you're like looking yes. at it, it's just like the visual impact yeah. yes and I'm wondering okay. maybe if you have do you have any video of yourself like working with students or anything like that that might yeah. be no that's I mean I was a teacher for years and no but uh, but I I think I hear you I'm going to focus on the visual the integrative arts aspect of stuff and and keep it as visual and clear and you know like that yeah okay um I think I think that was all uh oh sorry just to clarify one last thing sorry quickly um if I can we book can we say in the work in the proposal both our own work to be shared um in different ways and also if if kids work as part of it we can do that have that both be present Um, so like that's showing your work as a as a teaching artist. Um, no, sorry, as part of the proposed project, having having yeah, like as part of the proposed project, as part of what we want to do is have have it be this this process and things like that, but have like final outcomes be both like me separately as an artist showing some of my work, like a, a new small body of work and some kids' work as part of like present presentation. You have any thoughts on that, Tom? Yeah, I think absolutely. Because okay. The, the big the big driver, the, this whole project, the, mm -hmm. this whole California Creative Corps, as, and, and nobody, nobody in the CAC has really said this directly, but to me, this is copied from the WPA back in the 30s. Mm -hmm. It's all community. It's all yeah. about, when, so when, when you partner, with when you partner with an organization, you're taking the stories of the people that they serve and you're working with that. You're, so you're generating art with that. So if the kids are working with you and generating art with that, as far yeah. as I'm concerned, that's, that's gold. I mean, that's part okay. of, that's, that's, if that's what you do, if that's part of the art that you're producing, yeah. then I, I think, I think absolutely. I don't, I don't okay. see anything wrong with that at all. That, what do you think, Lisa? Yeah, no, I, I was going to say, I think it would be great. I just would want to make sure that you're really clear in the description that that's what it is so that panelists don't get confused. Um, that would be my only concern is just making sure that it's really clear that this is student work. And um, yeah, I think that. that that's yeah, it would be. OK, thank you. It would be both. But yeah, um, both mine and student work separately. Me as an artist supporting student work, but also my own actual work separately. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Thanks so much. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, it looks like we have three folks with their hands up. I just want to be conscious of the time too. So um, if we could just keep keep questions brief. Um, so Lucas Gordon, if you want to be next. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you so much for this. Sorry, I have a fire engine going by right now. So. <laughs> so. So the first question I have is actually about the um, the sign-in page, um, it's asked about if you're a first-time applicant. So this isn't the same sign-in that we would sign in with the Arts Council. We have to do a new thing for doing applications for this grant, right? Yes, it's a completely new grant platform. Um, unless you have applied for a micro-grant in the last quarter, but other than that, it's a new, I don't know if you're referring to like past grant applications or past like artist registry, but it's completely different. 
other the than artist registry just making sure yeah. I, sh I should sign up separately for this I didn't want to so it's a new applicant so that was my first question it's that's what I thought it's a completely new platform um so you will need to do a new login perfect I just want to make sure um the next question is um for marketing materials um if you have best practices and um if it's okay to use marketing materials that are, and I think this was kind of answered in the last question, if it's okay to use marketing materials that are not about you as an artist, but about your capacity as a teaching artist. I think this is similar to um, the last question. So I think if your proposal is related to your work as a teaching artist, then I think that's great to include. And then, um, and I think the same for the artwork, if if you find that obviously you want to put your artwork in as well, but if you've done artwork as, or if you've done teaching art, um, you should probably potentially, and you're planning on doing teaching art um, as part of your project, it might be wise to include some images of your past um, art education experience. Um. I, I want to be hesitant to say what you should and shouldn't do. Um, oh, oh, sorry. I guess I should word that differently. No, no I just, I just want to be clear that no. I don't want to, I, I just don't want to tell you what, what you should do. Um, but, you know, I think it's, it's hard for me to say without understanding the project. I mean, I think it's similar to the last question. Tom, I don't know if you have any other further the only thing I can say is uh, we can't answer that question. And the reason we can't answer that question is we're not the panelists. So, I mean, a lot of it is going to depend. So, I mean, you could, and I think it really would say this to just about anybody, is who, we once we don't know who the panelists are and what they're going to deliberate on. So, you may have this amazing project that just doesn't float the panelists' boat. Happens. So, I would say, so we can't really make that determination but you need to make that determination as to as to how that works with the project you're proposing so if that works with the project you're proposing and showing student work that has happened under under your tutelage great we can't we don't know how the panel will respond but i i mean i, I think that's that's what I'm, I'm trying to say i don't i think really want to encourage or discourage um but again, it all, it all comes down to telling your story and telling the story of your project and how this all relates in. So if you are a teaching artist and you're working with, you're working with kids, then it, 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 as a grant writer, I, I would advise putting some of the student work in to say, look, here's some of the amazing things that the kids I work with have done. And I want to do something like this for the project. And then my last question was about the letters of recommendation. It says they should be from two professionals in your art form. Um, you know, I, as a photographer, I work with a lot of different brands. Um, I work for Visit Long Beach. Is it, can it be someone who I work with that's not necessarily a photographer that I provide my, my photography for as a, a business or something? Yeah, I, I would say Visit Long Beach would be a, a, definitely a good um, letter of recommendation. Some like a client like that who who definitely has experience with visual visual like marketing and things like that. So I think that's fine. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, so we have two more folks with their hands raised. Diane, I'm gonna unmute you. Hi. Um, thanks for this. My question, my question is about the work samples. Hmm. I, myself, I'm a sculptor. I'm very interested in starting a WPA style sculpture shop, workshop uh, for jobs, really, in the arts. So my question about the work samples, it is two work samples. So one I could do for the past work I did in the yesteryear. And then I was thinking of the second um, work sample speaking to my process, where I can talk about the clay and the plaster and what is involved in creating um, sculpture 
that is not highly cost um, intensive in the beginning. So would it be okay to do one work part, one of the work samples of the past and the other work sample pertaining to the future? I think you can. Um, again, it's, it's, it's however you tell your story. Um, I would say what the panelists are really looking for here, they're, they're looking to see what your art looks like. It's really that simple. Um, and the reason that I, I had mentioned before, recent samples are better um, than older samples is because this is what you're doing right now. So in other words, it would be the work that, what, what would be, what you're trying to tell, show the panelists is what would this look like what, what, what will this project that if, if they select you as one of the artists, what would the art likely look like? So I the, like reason, the reason I was, I was, I, I didn't I mean, to slam 19, <laughs> well, I didn't mean to slam 1997, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, the, the, the primary reason for that is, is there are very few artists that are doing exactly the kind of work that they were doing in 1997. It's, it's mostly what the work that you're doing now is so what you want to do is to create kind of paint a picture for the panelists as to what what might this look like because you've described everything about who you are what you're doing what what you know your art your artist statement would, would cover I think a lot of what you're talking about and then when it comes down to the work samples the work samples then are gives the panels panelists an idea of what is this project what may this project look like so that's why recent work tends to be a little better but again old older work if it if it helps with that through line if it helps describe the project that you want to do there's nothing wrong with putting older work well in my case um, my previous work was bronzes but the wpa workshop can't obviously do bronze because of the cost factor but we can do reliefs in concrete or plaster or something of that nature yeah, you know, and um, I honestly, I have no recent work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, then, uh, but but the most re the most recent that you have, and well, that would be about nine about two thousand and four. Then, but I've been waiting since nineteen eighty nine when I first went in depth on on the WPA and what it did for the population and how great it was for sculpture and. So I've been waiting since nineteen eighty nine until Senator Ben Allen did this uh, legislation. And by the way, um, Tom, mm. there was a reference to WPA in the initial draft of the legislature. Legislature, I don't know, it started off like that, but I guess it got washed out because as physical um, artist type, you know, we, we're manual workers, sculptors, it's physical. So I, 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 the advice as a grant writer, mm -hmm. the advice that I would give to you then, uh, if 2004 is your most recent work, then I, I would say, show the work that is best representative of what the proposed project would look like. That's that's what I would, uh, that's what I'd recommend. Or I can create something before the grant um, deadline. Right, it's up to you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. So um, just keeping an eye on time, we've got two more folks with their hands raised. Raise Mario, I'm gonna unmute you now. Hello everyone. I just have a question about timeline and relationship to the project. I know that the, the residency is um, to start in July of this year and end of June of next year. But I was just thinking in relationship to the collaborative, if you are interested in culminating something or having a pinnacle uh, event at the kind of holiday time, um, and then what, how would we roll over into the new year if that's something that we're interested in doing, if you have any thoughts on that? Does that make sense? Um, I'm a little bit confused because it's- Like, I'm, so we have a whole year timeline to work with the organizations? Correct. And yes. the project that I have in mind, I was thinking like a kind of pinnacle event would happen around the holidays. So then we would have still a few months after that to kind of continue out uh, the residency with the organization. So I was just wondering what kind of thoughts you had on that or how to 
how you guys are thinking about how if an artist timeline with the organization, if that's possible or not possible, that's just my question. I think that's definitely possible to do. Um, I think it gives enough time, you know, for planning with an organization um, to plan it out. And there can be multiple projects that happen. So if that's like your kind of bigger event or what what have you, and then maybe there's some some other work that's still happening after that time so that it, it still is a year long project and you're still engaging with the organization. I think that could easily work. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, and then one more hand raised, David George. I would like to do like a five minute. Yes, hi everybody. Um, and thank you again for putting on today's session. My question is quick. I just feel like I, and forgive me if I missed it, um, but I was here from the beginning. I just don't think we've looked at marketing uh, samples. We've focused mostly on just work samples. Is there any way that we can go and dive into that really quickly? Yes, you're correct. We did not show samples of marketing materials. Um, I don't have any prepared samples, but you know, in general, um, we've had folks submit anything from, you know, if it's an event flyer to a write-up in a newspaper, or um, if it's like a video that is, is promoting the program, social media, kind of the gamut. Tom, I don't know if you have any suggestions okay. of some um, successful marketing samples. Well, can I give you an example? Maybe you can help guide it a little bit. Yeah. So, okay. So my project is going to be an extension of a book that I put out last year. Um, and I was very fortunate to do an interview with Good Morning America with something like that um, work. Yes. Okay. That was all. Thank you. Um, and then Tiffany asks, um, I don't know if this is answered twice, but um, letter of rec from an organization that also applied for the grant. Yes, you may. Um, that's no problem at all. And then we'll post the link to the grant page. Um, so that's all the questions I have. Um, Sergio, would you mind putting up the slide that has our contact information so everybody can? Yeah, let me go ahead and put that up. Um, Give me one sec. So you can email us at grants at artslb.org if you have any additional questions or if something came up um, you know, after this workshop. We're recording this. It'll be up on our YouTube channel and we'll email it out. Um, I do want to just let everybody know to make sure you sign up um, on our on the web page for the program. We do have a little form that you can fill out um, and we're sending out updates to folks that have signed up on that form. So if you want to stay like most up to date with Creative Core, sign up on that form with our program. And thank you to everybody who came and participated. And thanks to Tom and Sergio and Judy for your work tonight as well. Yeah, thank, thank you to everybody. Yes, thank you.